The governors of a middle school in Woburn Sands are urging Central Bedfordshire Council to remove their objections to it becoming a secondary school. Fulbrook School has unveiled plans to take children up to 16 years old rather than only up to the age of 13. It's something that the majority of local parents are supporting because the nearest school is nine miles away in Leighton Buzzard. However, Central Bedfordshire Council have objected to the plans. John uh, Baker is a parent and local campaigner, joins me on the line now. Good morning to you, John. Good morning. Uh, what sort of kids go to the school at the moment, then? Um, well, we have uh, children who leave the local feeder schools. That's us, the guys, Woburn, Husband Crawley and Ridgemont. Um, and they leave at age nine uh, to go to Fulbrook. They stay there till age 13. And the school aspires to extend its age range to age 16. Okay. Um, providing a, a secondary school for children in this area. And this is because Central Beds Council has, has engaged in a, in, a, in a policy called the Schools for the Future Policy. And the school itself has taken the initiative, the head teachers and the governors, to work with its lower schools to come up with a proposal to solve the secondary education problem in this area. So, John, at, at the moment, at the age of 13, where do the local kids go then? Uh, they go t- two ways. Uh, they'll head into Milton Keynes for people, for children living in Woburn Sands, and they will go to, I think, it's Walson High. And the other, the other the half of the children, they'll head on a coach every day to Leighton Buzzard. OK. The, the school feels it would better serve the community as a secondary school. It's fair to say you agree with that? Absolutely. This, this is the natural response. We've got vast amounts of new housing going up in this area. We already have children essentially being separated at age 13. Children have, have been educated together in these lower schools and in, in, in Fulbrook. And at age 13, just because of a, an ancient county boundary... Half the children are told to go in one direction, half the children are told to get on a coach every day and do a 20-mile round trip to Van Dyke. And, of course, this is, this is a choice, remember. I mean, mm. if parents want to send their children to Walton High or Van Dyke, that choice is still available. Fulbrook merely want permission from Central Beds Council to extend its age range to 16, so it can provide parents with that choice for those children to remain at Fulbrook. So this has always been the case, though. Why has it come to a head now? Uh, well, it's come to head because Central Beds Council are ending the three-tier system. It's inherently very expensive. They are moving to the two-tier system. So this is the schools for the future policy. But we're now at a point that the timelines are very tight. CBC has to show the support for this school by the 27th of February because Fulbrook is compelled to submit a business case for the Department for Education. CBC has known about this proposal for months. The councillors that allegedly run this authority are well aware they've objected. And they've dithered until now before responding to offers of a meeting with the school to discuss the problem. But that, that, we literally had to engage in a huge public campaign mm. to persuade elected councillors to talk to the school. It's most unsatisfactory. I, I, this is the bit I just, I, which I just don't understand. It. So if Central Bedfordshire or are heading to a two-tier system, why are they objecting to Fulbrook doing this? I, I just don't understand it. Well, well, well who, who knows? I mean, this is a policy that's, that's been dreamt up. In Chicksands, it, it hasn't had a public consultation, as far as we can tell. It's a set of councillors sitting in Chicksands coming up with these ideas. I mean, surely they should be working with the experts, the head teachers, the governors. And in this case, the school has shown the initiative. And, and it's not just an idea mm. being pursued by the school. This is Fulbrook, Aspley Guys, Lower, Richmond, Woburn, Husband Crawley, Swallowfield, the head teachers, the governors, spending months working on this plan carrying out a huge public consultation, and all they're asking for is recognition and support from Central Beds Council. They're not even really asking for money at this stage. They just want Central Beds Council to tick a box that says, we support what you're doing. We recognise that this school has existed for decades. We, we're pleased you've solved the problem for us, but mm. we have a bunch of you know, dithering out-of-touch councillors in Chick Sands just say, well, no, sorry, we've decided it's Van Dyke, that's it, sorry. Well, John, we do, we do have a, a statement from Central Bed Council. We're going to read that out in a second. But in their first line, they say there isn't the demand. Well, I mean, let, let, let's look at the consultation response to considered demand. The school had to carry out a public consultation, of which 736 public responses were received, and 98% supported that proposal. I would like to see Central Beds Council carry out any other consultation over such a small area and to get such a huge response, particularly with an overwhelming public backing. So there is demand, there is housing being built, we have more housing on the way. And but that doesn't, are, that doesn't tell me how many students are going to be going to that school, though, just because they're building the houses. 
Um, well, if you're building houses near a school, we, we, we assume that children will want to go to that school. Why build houses in Woburn Sands and um, not provide a school place for them that's a five-minute walk away? Surely we believe in a society where we want children to walk to school, to cycle to school. But, John, not, but, but John, you say it's well and good for them to make this decision in, in Chick Sands, but, but they're looking at the bigger picture, aren't they? Um, well, they're, they're looking at the picture of Leighton Buzzard. This is, this is probably a picture of where they think they can most get some money to expand the current school. But if they're looking at the picture no. of Leighton Buzzard, that's great. That, that's fantastic for the residents of Leighton Buzzard and Linslade. But the problem is that the residents of Asper Guys, Husband Crawley and Woman Sands, etc., they don't live in Leighton Buzzard. They live here. OK, John, we've got to leave it there. Thank you very much for joining us this morning. Good morning to Alice. Good morning. Uh, thank you very much for joining us. So it's, it's right on the cusp of the two authorities, isn't it? It's, it's under Central Beds Council, but more kids from MK go there. It is, yeah. Um, Woven Sands is fairly unique in the fact it's a town split by a boundary uh, between two local authorities, half of which is in Milton Keynes, half of which is within Central Beds. And as a result, that undoubtedly presents certain challenges for the town where services are split, um, be that health services, education services, bin collections, you name it. And this, unfortunately, is one of those things which has ended up causing a few problems as a result of it. So, so, so Central Beverage then seemed to be saying that they don't need extra secondary places because Milton Keynes can pick up the slack. Is that right? Every local authority has a statutory responsibility to provide enough school spaces. So the local authorities have to say that. But Milton Keynes Council is really clear that they want our local children to go to local schools. And I think What's really important is that this proposal offers that opportunity to children in town up to 16. And with just over half the pupils coming from Milton Keynes Council, uh, as you say, I think that this is going to be really important. This is why I'm, I'm, I'm having difficulty understanding it, because MK Council aren't actively supporting it, and central beds are objecting. Why, why are the authorities reluctant to support a school to change from a three-tier middle school to a secondary school? So Milton Keynes Council are supportive of it. Unfortunately, the wording of their letter, which I've actually asked the Cabinet Member and the Director for and Children's Services, along with my ward colleague, to get that changed and be more supportive. They are supportive of the parent choice element. The school's an academy, so in effect, it's an independent school. So it can apply directly to the Education Funding Agency for capital funding to expand. So mm. that's for physical things like classrooms. But uh, absolutely, CBC seems to be a blocker in all of this at the moment. Um, and it's really important that as we get to the deadline for the <laughs> application next week, that there is no blocker for the school to expand and grow as they see fit. And more importantly, the local community and parents really want mm. to see grow. Because that's the thing, isn't it? Because ultimately, this will be a regional schools commissioner that, that makes this decision and as we've discussed here the school serves families from from milton Keynes and central bed so they're going to need the backing of both to make this change aren't they and, and yeah. if, if, if central beds keep objecting it's, it's gonna they're gonna stop it happening yeah and it's really it's really frustrating particularly considering the local community are really clear on how they want to see the school grow i mean we're doing all we can from a milton Keynes perspective i've got a meeting in an hour or two again to go over it to see what else can can be said with the, the director of children's services so we're going to raise it again there and ian stewart the mp for milton Keynes south has taken this up with the other two local mps in parliament and he's doing all he can at a national level to see support for the proposal so really we're in the central bedfordshire council's hands and hopefully they will be able to change their position. Alice, thank you very much for joining us this morning. Dominic Schofield has two children at Fullbrook and joins me on the line now. Good morning to you. Good morning. Um, is it a good school? It, yeah, it's a great school. We're very happy. Our children have really, really flourished there. So, so you would like your kids to be able to stay there until they're 16 then, obviously? Yeah, I, I, I think that would, that would be fantastic for them and, uh, and you know, for, for the other kids here. I mean, obviously... There's a lot of support for the school amongst the parents, and you know that reflects the, the the fact that it's a quality school. Of course, at the moment they get to the age of thirteen, they have to go elsewhere. Where will they have to go instead? Well, our kids um, will be going to uh, uh, to Cedars or, or Van Dyke. Whereas my eldest will be going uh, in September, and we're just sort of waiting to hear which of those he'll be going to. But those those are the two schools in Leighton Buzzard. Uh, so th th they're the ones that have to get a by coach. What twenty? Yeah, they have they have to get they have to get get a coach over there. Um, and I mean, you know, that, that there's, there's a certain amount of uh, 
uh, difficulty about how many coach places there are and that kind of thing as well, which is a bit uncertain. But uh, but yeah, they they, they get they get a coach over there. Okay, is, is do other parents share your view on this one? Yeah, I think so. Well, I mean, the, obviously the school did a consultation on these plans and and got over seven hundred and thirty responses, of which ninety eight percent were positive. And and the interesting thing was that was. I mean, about a third of those were parents of kids at the school at the moment. A third were parents of kids who were going to be coming into the school from the lower schools. And, and a third of those were just responses from the local community um, in support who don't even have you know, kids at the school at the moment. So I, I think you know, that shows you the, the breadth of support there is across the community for this. We do have a, a statement from the Central Beds Council. We're going to be reading it out later. But the, the top line of the statement basically says there's, there's not a demand for it. Some of you agree, yeah. don't agree with well, no, I mean, I, 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 I think so. It's a bit disingenuous of them to say that because um, so they're suggesting that because in the local plan, I think there's only 37 houses slated in, in this in this area. But that ignores the fact that, that they, we've got at the moment, some of that is on hold because of uh, waiting for the for the route of the expressway, I, I, I believe. And I mean, you know, you only have to look around here and drive around. And on almost every field around here, it seems, has, has got houses being built on it at the moment. And there are, there are you know, plans for lots more to infill between wherever the expressway goes and the M1 and, and wherever else. Um, so I think to say that there's, that there's, there's not going to be any further demand for new places in the next few years is, is a little bit disingenuous of them, to be honest. Well, Dominic, I appreciate you joining us this morning. Thank you very much indeed.